Hey, what's up everyone? It's Reed and we are going to be continuing with our stopwatch application and talking about a few memory leaks and probably finding a few bug fixes as we clean up our code here. So just to give you guys a uh, jumping off point or where we left off, let's have a look at our application. So today is Sunday. Right now when we click this button, we get a greeting and uh, let's see here. Oh, let's refresh. And we also have this timer working. It's going from five to negative infinity at the moment. And when we click our button, it is undefined. Okay, so today is Sunday, the first day of the week, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what's going on here. This is kind of our, our first bug that we'll go through together. So right now we have a display date method and it is taking in this day names array, the zeroth element of which is Sunday. So that's the day we're looking to map to. And um, because arrays start at index zero, we want the current date dot get day to give us the value zero, right? Okay, so what is happening here is we have a day number call in our um, display date method and we have this method uh, or sorry this conditional this if statement checking to see if day number exists right so if you guys have been following along so far so good but today is the zeroth day of the index and zero in javascript is falsy and one and every other number here is going to give us a, a truthy value for day number so we have this weird situation where zero, even though it is the index that we want, uh, and it is going to give us Sunday from the array of day names, is giving a false value here. So it is short circuiting this conditional and we're not getting anything from our display date. So we're getting an undefined value in this part of our method. So it is passing day names, this array up here, but when we call current date day. We're getting zero and we're saying basically if a false value here and this does not happen so we never return the value that we expect right so we could get by without checking uh, to see if these two arguments exist but we never want to return an undefined value in the first place uh, that's why we put this code here so let's go ahead and update this conditional to do what it should be doing we can actually just check for the day array and the day number and then let's uh, also check for, let's make this its own expression just to keep it separately here. And then we'll say, and uh, so it's kind of like saying if we have an, a, a day array and we have a day number and also day number, actually, uh, let's say, so, okay, both of those have to exist or uh, day number, okay, we have a bit of a, a longer expression here, and day array, and we can say day number is not equal to zero. Okay, so basically we have the, the same check here. So we're checking uh, okay, do we have both of these? Yes, or we could have day array and day number can be zero. Okay, so that should get us a value of Sunday because now this value of zero can pass through. Let's make sure that's the case. And day, or here we go, how about that? Now it can work. Ayo, okay, sweet. So we fixed our first bug. And all that I had to do with is just fixing this conditional. And if we didn't want to be safe and check to make sure that this argument was passing through the same, or these two values, and we weren't worried about returning an undefined value, you know, it's gonna work anyway. So this looks a little bit more complicated, but it's just to make sure that our application doesn't error out. So you're welcome to include this check, or you could just ignore it altogether 
write slightly worse code and um, you know if you have a an interesting use case come through or a user tries to manipulate this data later on when you want to make it dynamic say you want to hook it up to a calendar or something like that you might run into the problem then for now we have Sunday okay now let's move on to our next book which is we have this timer moving to negative infinity it's just gonna keep going and keep going we don't want that so let's figure out how to short circuit that and if you guessed we're going to use another conditional statement so let's go ahead and put that inside here so we are going to say if and we want to check for something here before we do all this time updating before we allocate memory to uh, performing these functions here performing these uh, variable assignments these value assignments so let's say uh, if the time passed is less than the time remaining so if time passed is less than the time remaining in other words if five seconds have passed then because our time limit here is five uh, which is also our time remaining for now because we're going to we're going to have this be dynamic later uh, from a user input time value for now we just have uh, our static value so this will work fine for now um, so if time passed is less than time remaining, then let's do all this stuff. Otherwise, it's going to get short-circuited, right? So hopefully, if this is working, we should stop seeing negative numbers here. Let's refresh it and check out our timer. We'll just wait for it to tick down to zero. It's stopping at two. That's interesting. Let's try our time limit uh, and just hard-code this for now. Uh, this way the yeah, the time limit uh, could be affected here and this will be nice actually because we can uh, not worry about having to make that a different value later okay sweet so we're going to zero um, I'll, I'll dig into the logic of that in a bit but for now okay looks like it's working just fine so great and now what we want to do is let's uh, let's move on to collecting user data and then let's try to use that to display some time and even if it's just in the console for now I think it's it's going to be a good place for us to continue so to catch user data from an application we want something called an input and there are different types of inputs so we can see if we just uh, <laughs> text is actually the type that we're going to use um, if we it equals so here are loads of different input types you guys have seen uh, buttons check boxes dates we'll get like a calendar emails uh, for emails that we want to send through so I mean there's all sorts of types right now we just want a simple text input let's give it a placeholder which is just the value that comes inside the input and usually by default it's styled to be like a, a transparent uh, form of text. And this is going to hint to the user that, you know, something should go here. So let's say enter minutes. Um, then what else do we need? We want an ID uh, so we can grab this value in a bit of, uh, let's see, input minutes. And is that everything that we need for our input? Um, I think that's going to do it. Oh, I know. Let's, uh, let's add a max length here because at some point it's just going to get ridiculous, right? Like we don't need a timer of uh, like 450 hours. Let's just say, oh, well, I guess 450 will work here. Let's, uh, let's say a max length of two. Otherwise, we're just going to be getting into days, right? Um, let's call this one hours. Nah, actually, yeah, let's call this one minutes. And, uh, and we will make it a max length of three. Uh, and then I'm going to, on my Mac, hit uh, shift, option, and down to just copy this line. Uh, or you can just copy and paste it if you're on a uh, Windows machine. Uh, so we do want the input type to be text again, and this time we want to enter the seconds. And then we'll just change the input name to 
input seconds and the max length here will be two because if it is a different number uh, basically we're not worried about it so we want a, a double digit number of seconds so that could be something like 99 it could be something like 07 and no matter what it is we know that we can basically deal with that number in a way that's uh, it's not going to pollute our user uh, interface so if someone wants to try to enter like a bajillion seconds we don't want that so now we have a, a button and buttons can actually have types too let's just make this one of type button and we'll give this an ID of what uh, display time so on click we want this to display time actually let's call it uh, Hmm. Uh, op timer. So for operate timer. And let's go ahead and say uh, start timer for the button's name. So this is just some HTML. Let's see if it's uh, popping off here. And let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, timer piece so we don't have to look at that every single time. Okay, nice. So right now, this doesn't do anything, right? And we've learned what to do here um, as we try to grab some data. So keep in mind that we've commented this out. And um, let's go ahead and interact with these inputs that we've uh, just created. So let's say uh, we have a an input value of Actually, let's go ahead and just get our button value. So, uh, op timer button, and that's going to be equal to the uh, document dot get element. Remember, it's singular. Uh, we don't want to make that mistake again. And that is op timer. Okay, so we have our button, and now let's go ahead and add an event listener to this guy. So on click, we want to perform uh, some sort of function. This function is going to do a bunch of different things. So first of all, let's do something that keeps track of the state of the timer. And by state, I mean for this, uh, whether or not it's running or not. And you might hear someone say, um, refer to this as a flag. So is paused it's going to start as true right because it doesn't just start running until we click the button so what we can do here is a nice little like nifty trick um, we can set pause equal to not is pause and it's just a matter of personal preference but i like labeling these boolean values uh, aka like true or false values as is and then what they are controlling so that way i can know just by looking through my code okay this is a boolean and that's how i'm going to interact with it that's how i'm going to treat it as i code so on click this goes from paused to not paused so pause will go from true to false meaning if it's not paused it's running great okay nice so let's uh, figure out how to interact with the um, the input values that we have um, or, or the button but yeah let's start with the button uh, the button that we have in uh, these two different cases so if pause is true if is pause is true so if it's running we want the op so here's a little thing uh, a new concept op timer button we want to refer to it but we're already in this event listener that has a callback of it. So actually the the scope of what we're using has changed. And this is a, a JavaScript keyword, it's called this. So this is going to refer to the uh, operating timer button in the scope that we have here. So we're going to be referring to this button. So this uh, dot inner HTML equals, and we'll just say, uh, what was it? Start timer, I believe. Let's look back here. Start timer. Okay, let's keep that consistent. And 
if not is pause or if it uh, is running, let's go ahead and change uh, this dot inner HTML equal to pause timer. Okay. So we click here. Okay, nice. The text is toggling how we would expect it. And we can actually write this uh, in a shorter way. We can use a, uh, a ternary expression or a ternary operator, which uh, would involve using the is pause value. And here's kind of a funky shorthand syntax. So basically, this is going to determine what we do or do not do. And the syntax is, let's go ahead and actually just grab what we wanted to do here. I'm just undoing a bunch, which is another, another pro move for sure. Too many times. Okay, so is pause. Okay, so we'll set that. And this uh, piece of the ternary operator uh, is what happens when things are true. And here's what happens when things are false. So let's say pause timer. Okay. And that should work the same. Awesome. Okay, cool. So let's go through this because it's a, it's a bit of a, <laughs> a complex concept. And I mean, obviously, I'm sure you guys are noticing the, um, the more succinct the code gets, the more complex it is uh, just to sort of wrap your head around it, at least to start. And, you know, there's no problem with that. It's just stuff that you can get used to over time and we'll be able to, um, you know, write more succinct, more legible code as we go. So there's nothing wrong with just having this if statement and having it in there, but this is just a more easy to read succinct code and we don't repeat ourselves, right? So we don't have to keep writing all these checks here. So if is pause is true, we're going to run the code after the question mark. If is pause is false, we're going to run the code after the question mark. Sweet. All right, yeah, so for the next video, let's uh, work on going through and getting values out of these inputs and put them in the console to start just to make sure everything is looking good. We're going to add these up and then we're going to create a format function to showcase a countdown for our timer in minutes and seconds. So I'll see you guys in the next video.